Hi, this is Benjamin, uh, founder of Farm Again. Uh, today we are in a special location. Uh, this is a village near Gundlupet uh, uh, of Karnataka state. Uh, if you look back, uh, there is a small mountain and right next to the mountain is where the uh, Bandipur tiger, tiger Reserve begins. And if you keep going further, you will reach Mudumalai uh, forest range. Uh, so this is a five acres uh, farm of which about four acres have been planted with uh, mango plants. And they have used three different varieties of mango, uh, Alfonso, Kesar and uh, Imam Pasant. Uh, almost an equal uh, ratio. Uh, this is just about 10 months old crop and you can see the uh, growth of plants is really uh, good. So uh, if you see uh, the plants have been uh, planted on a raised bed, it looks like they actually made a two feet uh, uh, tall beds and about four feet wide beds. And because of that, uh, the roots were able to really penetrate uh, very easily. That is one. And number two, uh, the typically, when we, have, when we use our sensor-based and artificial intelligence-based irrigation, uh, the sensors get the real-time data and then there is a prediction done as to when uh, the soil would dry up and then uh, the next prediction will be done uh, to figure out the right time and duration of irrigation and accordingly the irrigation will be done. Therefore, the air water balance of the root zone is always very well maintained. So the combination of raised bed and the air water balance is what I think has contributed to this kind of uh, growth in just 10 months. And in the past, about two years back, we've also shot a very detailed video uh, showcasing how this raised bed can help in vigorous root growth. And uh, if you're interested, you can click the video or uh, take a look at that in the description box. Uh, so this farm, they have a very simple fertigation system. Uh, if you can see the side, uh, they, they do two things. One is they uh, do waste decomposing organically. And second, they also prepare jiva mirtam. And when they prepare jiva mirtam, they use uh, the waste from their own uh, cow, which is a local breed, um, and uh, they mix both jiva mirdam and, and the output of waste decomposer into this tank in certain ratio, and only this gets injected into the main line uh, through this pump, and it, like I said, it's a very simple system. So in the past, we have seen a lot of farms where they have elaborate fertigation system with uh, five tanks, six tanks, even 12 tanks of, uh, I mean, for different minerals and different fertilizers, um, and this is very simple. but if you, I mean, we already saw the growth of uh, plants in this farm. It's only almost 10 months old uh, and the plants have really grown reasonably well. Uh, I think it is giving uh, tough competition even to the uh, systematic uh, uh, organic, I mean, uh, inorganic methods. Uh, so I think uh, even though they give only these two uh, inputs, uh, the plants seem to have really responded quite well. As I said earlier, this, is, this farm uh, actually follows the ultra high density method, which means unlike regular uh, 9 by 9 uh, uh, plantation, uh, 9 by 9 meters plantation, this requires pruning because otherwise the plant can really grow uh, quite tall and uh, wide. Uh, so what they typically do is when it starts itself, they uh, chop off the top and then maintain like three branches, sometimes a little more than that. And each branch again they prune and then they make three, three uh, further branches so that you make it like a round shape when it grows up, uh, contain both the canopy size as well as the height, which helps in managing the plant quite well. <clears throat> also, once you cut, the new branches is where the flowering and the fruiting uh, uh, takes place. So it is very important for you to continue to do the uh, pruning, uh, sometimes you know two to three times in a year. And uh, that's, that's one aspect of uh, ultra high density mango plantation. The second, uh, equally important is the stress management. So right after har harvest, uh, depending on the variety and the uh, you know, location, uh, there is a period to, uh, uh, during which uh, uh, stress is given to mango plants. Uh, stress meaning no irrigation or no fertigation is uh, administered during that time. And if you follow both uh, stress management and pruning uh, religiously, uh, these mango plants will really perform to their peak. Uh, so the traditional method of planting this uh, mango would be approximately 9 meters plant to plant both ways. So which will be approximately 60 to uh, 70 trees in one acre. But in high, def uh, high density, uh, you go higher in numbers. You re reduce the spacing and actually have more plants. And uh, when you get into um, uh, high density, you'll have to obviously prune so that the plants don't become like the regular plants. And uh, now the concept of ultra de density has come, come in where uh, there are farms where they go up to 1,500 plants in one acre. Uh, to that extent, the spacing is reduced and they manage almost like a vegetable farm. So this farm, they follow row to row 10 feet and plant to plant uh, 5 feet, which if you really calculate will come to around 871 plants in one acre. 
So therefore, they will actually prune and maintain the plants in a way they don't compete with each other and no, don't hit each other. And this contributes to a better uh, yield. In fact, uh, theoretically speaking, a lot of literature suggests that uh, the uh, ultra high density plantation where you have 1000 to 1500 plants can even yield about 70 to 80 tons uh, from one acre. The traditional yield is about 3 to 5 and uh, well managed farms with uh, high density of uh, 100 to 200 can go up to um, you know 15 tons and the ultra high density of 1000 to 1500 trees should technically go to about 70 to 80 tons per acre uh, yield. So generally uh, when you plant mango like this, even in ultra high density, you have a lot of space in between. And this space can be better utilized during the initial few years, at least two years, uh, for additional income. So the, if you look at this form, they have uh, here uh, chili, radish, carrot and uh, tomato this side and beans. Uh, although the purpose of uh, growing vegetables here as intercrop is only for domestic purpose, you can really utilize the space for uh, commercial cultivation and make some extra revenue. So it can cover almost uh, the, the co co cost of setting up the, uh, of the farm because setting up of a high density farm is quite expensive. So the intercropping can help in recovering a lot of that expense and uh, become profitable much sooner than otherwise. I hope you found this video useful. Um, we will come back to the farm again uh, maybe about a year later to see how the growth uh, is at that point in time and how the productivity is and all that. Um, and if you uh, did find this video useful and if you think it can be useful for somebody else, please do forward. And if you want our videos to reach you uh, as soon as we upload, please do subscribe. Thank you very much.